A terrain elevation reference point can be used to specify the exact elevation of your terrain at a specified location on your plan. Alternatively, the terrain's elevation can be referenced off of the terrain's contour zero, which can be especially useful for imported terrain. Taking a look at the terrain elevation reference point, we will need to create a terrain perimeter first, which can be done by accessing the terrain menu at the top of the screen. You'll see that when selecting the terrain perimeter and pressing Open Object, in the Terrain Specification dialog, the terrain's absolute elevation is by default set to automatic. In this state, the program automatically selects a location on the plan based on the terrain data present to act as a reference point. It then sets the terrain elevation at that point based on the floor structure, guaranteeing it should always be above ground. As you can see on this simple plan, as I add and change the terrain data, the program automatically shifts where it's referencing in the plan in order to guarantee that no part of the floor structure is buried under the terrain. An important thing to remember about terrain elevation data is that it operates off of absolute values, meaning that a zero-inch elevation here would put the terrain level with the top of the subfloor for floor 1, which is not ideal in most situations. Also keep in mind that terrain elevation is relative only to other terrain elevation data, so if you have one data point at 0 and another data point at 36, these two points will always be 36 inches different from one another, regardless of the overall terrain elevation that we specify here. So all we're doing here is specifying the height of the structure at that specified point relative to the terrain data below it. Unchecking Automatic allows either the surface elevation or the reference point's location to be edited manually. Also, with these values being manually specified, this allows the reference point to be seen and moved in either plan or camera views. The reference point can also be added or removed by selecting the terrain perimeter and then selecting either the Place or Remove Terrain Elevation Reference Point buttons in the Edit toolbar, allowing you to place the reference point wherever you want it. Once the terrain elevation reference point is in the desired location, setting the terrain's elevation should be rather simple. Suppose you know that the porch of an existing structure is exactly 38 inches from the ground. Simply opening the terrain specification, you can enter 38 inches for the elevation, and that's that. Looking at a more complex design, I've decided to use the garage as a reference. So selecting the terrain perimeter, I'll click to add the elevation reference next to the garage. Then, since I want the ground around my garage to be flat, I'm going to place an elevation region here, making sure that it's set to a zero inch elevation. Opening the terrain specification, I'm going to start off by setting the surface elevation to zero. Then I can make adjustments from there. Creating a camera view, I can see that it looks like the terrain is a little high. Looking at the garage room, I can see why. As expected, the garage floor is set to a negative value so that there's a step down from the house into the garage. It's only stepping a short distance, however. So opening the terrain specification again, I can set the terrain here to a negative value as well, pushing the terrain here down to meet that same location. However, I know there's gonna be a driveway port here, so I'm actually gonna push it a little further. Let's say negative five inches. That looks better. Looking back at the plan, I now know that this elevation region is essentially tied to that point, so all other elevation lines or regions will be referenced from this location, guaranteeing that this part of my terrain will never change. Again, it's important to remember that the terrain elevation data is relative only to itself. All I'm setting here is the elevation of the terrain from that point, so I need to remember that five inch difference that I just added. For example, say I want my front porch here to be 18 inches above the terrain. This porch steps down 4 inches from the front door, so adding a region here at negative 18 minus another 4 inches should put it right where I need it. However, this 22 inch drop is relative to the other 0 inch region, and because that terrain is dropped 5 inches down at that location, I need to factor that 5 inches back into this region. So raising it up another 5 inches, we'll see that 18 inch drop from the porch. This plan also has a walkout basement in the back, 
So going down to floor zero, I can open up this back room, and on the structure panel, I can pull its absolute floor elevation. Selecting and copying this value, I can go back up to floor one, create another elevation region, open it up, and paste that value in. Now I probably want to have a bit of a step down to a slab or something here, so I'll drop it just a little bit more to be sure. But again, because the entire terrain is dropped 5 inches, I'll need to add that 5 inches back in as well. And taking a camera view, we'll see that the terrain is right where I want it. Earlier I had mentioned that the terrain elevation can also reference the terrain's contour zero. This is a similar concept, but let's see what it looks like. Say that I had received some survey data for this site. Whether it was an imported DWG or recreated from a PDF file, I have a set of elevation lines here. And assuming that this data is accurate, I need to figure out how my new construction is going to fit on this lot. Obviously, set to automatic is not going to work. The house is sitting much too high. However, turning on my terrain primary contours layer, I can identify my contour zero line, It looks like it runs right across my front porch. Perfect. And I can open up my terrain specification dialog, set it to reference contour 0, and then set the surface height at negative 18. This effectively ties the elevation of the structure to that location on my plan, so that when I make changes elsewhere, say flattening out the terrain for the garage, modifying the terrain for the walkout basement, etc., I'll know that this 18-inch elevation I have for my front porch will not change. 